you've done a, a lot of work on how trade over the last 20 years uh, had a profound effect on the way that the economy has grown and the way that it's uh, affected different parts of the world. Um, can you give us a sense of what technology might mean over the next 10 or 20 years uh, for the way that the economy grows and, and where we can expect to see the greatest changes? Sure. So the way I um, think about technology, let's, let's start uh, back 5, 10 years, ten, maybe 20 years ago. Basically, information and communication technology allowed factories to unbundle, and we got all this offshoring. But that affected manufacturing. And the same technology allowed automation, but again, mostly in manufacturing. The technology that's coming, all this digital technology you talked about, that's affecting the service sector, not the manufacturing sector. And it's worthwhile pointing out that about 20 to 30 percent of people work in the manufacturing sector, but two-thirds work in the service sector. So the technology going forward, in my mind, both in terms of globalization and automation, will be replacing jobs in the service sector much faster than in the manufacturing sector. So to me, that's the big change. We're going to go from people who did things being affected by technology to people who do things. Uh, wait, I didn't get that right. Who, who make things... And do things. We, I think we, yeah. We, right, you got it. Okay, we, we got good. it. That's, a, that's the best thing about having an intelligence audience. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. Maybe I'll just use sign language. Uh, so can you, uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because we already do see some trade and services, right? We do have, we have call centers. We have, uh, you know, people <clears throat> who are able to do medical scans for patients half a world away. Uh, how is this going to, to change and, and, and where is the expansion going to occur? So I think uh, there's, there's you wanna, two ways to go, for, go forward with this. One is it's already happened very extensively in web development and IT software, which is where people are working in offices in California or Zurich, but being remote. So that's kind of telecommuting. That's one way, and I view that just as going mainstream. So working in HR or insurance companies or banks, many of that stuff can be done by remote workers. Now, the second way to look at it is, in fact our companies and ourselves are changing to allow remote work. Many, many of us are telecommuting to work. And the companies are changing their structures, going to sort of matrix and flatter structures projects, which allow you to slot in remote workers. So we've already prepared ourselves for this, but most of it is domestic remote workers. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to just say, it'll go further away, especially because of what you mentioned, instant machine translation. And if I was going to point to one technology which will change a huge amount of things internationally, it's eliminating the language barrier. There are, for example, 8 million Chinese graduates, very smart people. They're incredibly elite in this billion and a half people. Most of them don't speak English well enough to get a job, for instance, working in the admissions office here in the Graduate Institute. But they do now. If you've, I don't know if you tried it, but... Uh, on Siri right now will translate in real time from natural language to natural language in Mandarin. And it, you can get it on Skype translator. So these people will, the barriers that prevented them from working in our offices are now eroding at an incredible pace. 